Do you see artists show off their graphic potted plant illustrations made using very satisfyingly buttery gouache paint and wonder how they came to be? Well, we're going to create one together today so you don't have to wonder anymore. I'm Vinita Maman from the Pigeon Letters design team. I'm a freelance lettering artist and illustrator and a Skillshare top teacher. In this tutorial, we're going to create an illustration of this hanging potted string of pearls plant right from sketching to all the different layers of painting. As for the materials you'll need, there's of course the paint. I'll be using acrylic gouache, which is what I'd recommend you use as well. However, you're also welcome to use traditional gouache if that's what you have at hand right now. You'll also need paint brushes. I'm using the Pigeon Letters Studio brushes in different sizes. As for paper, you'll need paper that's ideally at least 300 GSM thick, so any watercolor or acrylic paper should work fine. Besides these, you'll need a pencil for sketching, an eraser, a palette or plate to mix colors, a jar of water, some paper napkins, and a ruler or masking tape for borders. I've pulled up an image from Unsplash for us to use as a reference image for this illustration. So I would recommend that you also go ahead and have this image ready in front of you, either on a screen or printed out. So shall we get to sketching? I've gone ahead and drawn some borders on my paper. You can also use masking tape instead if you like. Now we'll start sketching. Somewhere around the halfway mark is where I want the pot to begin. So I'll draw a horizontal line like that and then straight lines downward from both endpoints and we'll curve out the bottom like that and connect it to the other side. Now I want to just curve the mouth of the pot ever so slightly and I'll get rid of that straight line to avoid confusion. There's a plastic pot inside the planter, so I'll draw that next with the mouth more or less parallel to this curve. Okay, The back of the pot is not visible because it's going to be covered up with the plant, so we don't need to draw that. Now I'll draw a little hole here for the rope to start from and then draw the rope on this side all the way till about the middle point on the top. Okay. Similarly, on this side, we'll draw a line. We can't really see where it starts from, so we'll start somewhere around here and take it to about here. And then we'll bring this in like this in a curve. Now we have these beads on the rope, so I'll just draw some freehand ovals here. It doesn't have to be at the exact same positions or the exact same design as in the reference image. We're just taking the idea that there are some beads there and translating that into our sketch. For it to look like the rope is passing through them, we'll mark some holes over here at the bottom of these beads. Now, I don't want to draw all of the textured details that's happening on the planter here. Instead, I'm just going to divide it into two and paint a different color at the bottom part. And now we can start with the plant itself. I'm just going to put in circles of different sizes to make up the P-shaped leaves of the plant. So one right here. The circle is in fact attached to a stem. So I'll just draw a stem coming out like that. Just a single line to indicate that. And then extend that line like this all the way down. And then add more P's to that vine. I'm loosely following the reference image, but I'm not being too accurate at all about where each circle goes or even bothering to account for the shape differences in some of them. I'm just sticking to circles as a style choice and going for it. I'll add another vine here like in the reference photo. and then draw some circles along that stem. And just like that, fill up the pot with all of our hanging strings of pearls, loosely referencing our image as we go.
all right so we have the top of the pot to fill up now and as you can see in our image it's just a lot of these green pearls stacked over each other randomly so that's what we're going to do we're just going to draw a bunch of circles in different sizes to fill up the space And we have this little guy over here just sticking out and him I want to make a bit more tapered just for fun. And that's it, our sketch is done. Now in terms of these lines, they are a bit darker than I would normally draw them so that they are visible on camera. But I still wouldn't worry too much about them because we are going to use gouache and most of it will get covered up because gouache is mostly opaque. Okie dokie, so let's start painting. We'll start by picking out our colors. I'm picking a bunch of different greens, some pinks, some browns, and then black and white to adjust the values. Now, depending on what paints you have at hand, your colors are likely to be different from mine. But you're welcome to try and recreate the colors I'm using or go for a completely different color palette. So that's up to you. We'll start with painting the background, which I want to do with a pale pink. So I'm just squeezing out some of this fluorescent pink paint to my palette adding a ton of white to make it a lot lighter than it is. And then I'll mix it up with a wet brush to see what we have. I think it's a nice pale pink, but it's just a tad too neonish for me. So I'm gonna add in a tiny bit of this crimson to dull this pink down just a smidge. So it's not like a super fluorescent pink. So that looks about right and the consistency looks good too. So I've loaded my brush with paint I'm using the size 10 round brush and I'm just going to go for it, starting from this corner over here. And I wouldn't bother painting around the sketch. I'm going to just go over all the lines, except for the planter itself. Cool. So here we go. Just getting it right into the corner here and then dragging it out like that to spread the paint. Okay, it might be a bit streaky, especially when you do larger areas like this, but personally, I don't mind it at all. In fact, I feel it adds to the whole handmade quality of the painting, so I choose to embrace the streaks. All right, so we're just going for it. You can get away with being even less careful if you're using masking tape instead of the pencil borders. It's going to be difficult to paint around each of these blobs accurately, so I'm just going to go right over them. Just wherever there will be the pink background showing through, I'm going to paint over all those areas. And as I paint the parts right next to the pot, I'm going to go a little slower and be more careful because the pot is going to be white, so it's just easier if I keep the pink off of it. So we can still see most of the pencil marks through the paint, which is actually good for us. It will help us paint over with our other colors with much more ease. All right, so that's it. Just finish up this corner as well and we're done with the background. Now we need to wait for this to dry. And remember, especially if you're using acrylic gouache, you want to wash your brush right away to keep your brushes nice and healthy. If the paint dries on the brush, it's going to be very difficult to remove it. So this has now dried up and we'll go ahead and paint these beads here with white next. Just like that. It's a bit too thin, the consistency of the paint. So I'm going to pick up some more paint on my brush and continue. Basically, we'll fill in all four of the beads with white like that, starting with the outlines and then filling up the space inside. Now, while that dries, we can paint the bottom of the pot. I'm gonna go with a bright yellow here, just straight out of the tube, not mixing a new color. And then with my size 4 round brush, I'll just paint this area. Again, starting with the outer parts more carefully and then filling in the inner areas more loosely. This time as well, I'm just painting right over our strings of pearls because it's not worth the effort of trying to paint around them.
Now some dark brown for our inner plastic pot. And this time, since it's quite a dark color, I'm going to take a little effort to try and paint around our pearls. Again, I'm not being perfect about this because I know these paints are opaque enough to cover up any imperfections. We just need to be able to see where our blobs need to go, which if we painted right over all of this with the dark brown, we will not be able to. All right, now with my size zero liner brush, I'm gonna pick up the same brown paint and we're gonna carefully paint our ropes. For little details like this curved part, we use just the tip of the brush very lightly for better control. Again, just very light pressure with just the tip of the brush for the outlines and then use more pressure for the larger areas of the line. Similarly on this side as well. Okay, so now while this dries, we're going to paint some shadows. I feel capturing some of the shadows in our image really adds interest to our illustration, makes it more dimensional and adds more visual contrast. So for the shadow areas, what we do is arrive at a color that is slightly darker and duller than the base color. When we think of shadows, we automatically think of gray, right? But with opaque paints like the acrylic gouache that we're using, Using grey to create all of the shadows does not work. Instead, whatever the base colour is, we go slightly darker and slightly duller than that. Now in this case, I'm going to start with the shadows on the white part of the pot. So because the base colour is white, a darker and duller version of that would be a light grey. So I'm using some lamp black. I'm using a teeny bit of it to mix with a lot of white to get a nice light grey. Now if you look at our reference image, the light falls from this side and all the shadows are towards the bottom right side. On our pot as well, this entire side is a little bit darker than the left side. So I'm going to go ahead and just block out this entire area with a grey just to simplify things a bit. I'll start somewhere around here and fill up this side. I'm stopping right where the white ends and the yellow begins because we mixed this grey colour exclusively for the shadows falling on the white areas, right? And then on this side, we have more defined shadows cast by the shape of the plant itself. So we'll draw an offset line like that and then add some blobs to it, just next to the pearls. And similarly on this side, we add some more defined shadow shapes towards the bottom right of our string of pearls. There are shadow areas on these beads also, so let's do that as well with the grey, again on the right side and on the bottom. And because it's a rounded object, we'll connect these two shadows with a curve, just like that, and then do the same thing on the other three beads. For this entire process, we're essentially observing our reference image and simplifying it as we paint it. Because we're not trying to create a realistic replica of the image. We're trying to use the image as a starting point to suggest some ideas to help us place our shadows and highlights and everything in a more believable way. But in the end, we want a stylized, illustrative piece. You can also add your own little things to it. Like here, I'm going to do a slight shadow on this side too to just define the shape better against the light pink background. Now using my liner brush, I'm going to use some yellow ochre to paint some highlights on the rope, again to just add some definition to it. So we'll add the highlight line slightly to the left on the ropes since that's where the light hits it. So that's done. 
Now there's a black line here on the plastic board. You can choose to not do it if you want. You don't have to include every detail. But I like how that would add some more contrast to the whole painting with such little dark details. So I'm going to do it. So with the same liner brush, just add a nice thin line along the edge of this pot. Now remember, we still have the shadows on the yellow part of the pot. So for that, let's mix a new color. So we already have some leftover yellow from painting the pot. And we said we want a darker, duller version of it, right? So we'll use some of this yellow ochre that we have here and mix it with a bit of the yellow so that it makes it a little darker and duller. Maybe some more yellow. And yeah, I think this should do. Now here we'll paint on this side of the pot, continuing from where the shadow ends on the white section. And we bring it down like that as the pot curves towards the bottom. And again on this side, we extend the more defined shadows that we created previously down to the yellow section. Similarly here as well. And I'll just bring this down a bit more and taper it out right at the bottom. And now all we have left is our actual plant. For this, I've picked out a couple of paint colors. We need a very dark, deep color like this viridian for the darkest shadow areas, a medium to dark green for the darker parts. I want to mix these two for that. Then a lighter green for the mid-tones to lighter parts and a yellow for the brightest highlights. Okay. So you can stick to just three greens, a dark, a medium and a light. I wasn't happy with using either of these colors by itself, which is why I'm going to mix these two. All right, let's start off by mixing that medium dark green, which in my case is a mix of these two, to get something like this green. I'll also take some of my light green out. I'm going to use a smaller liner brush. This is the 20 zero to paint our vines with this lighter green color. Just carefully trace over all the vines we sketched out. If we don't do this at this point, we'll have to get in between the pearls and draw the stems later on, which would be a much more complicated task. So it's best to get these all done at this point. We'll finish off this step with our little swirl and of course our oddball guy sticking out here. And now with our darker green that we just mixed, I'll go in and paint each of the pearls. So just basic circular blobs of paint over each of our pearls. Now as we get to the top of the pot, there are a lot of these pods just right next to each other so it might be difficult to tell them apart, which is okay. We'll just paint them all one flat color at this point because once the shadows and highlights come in, they will not look like this big blob of paint anymore. Once that layer is fully dry, we can go in and add some highlights. We know that our light is coming from this side, so most of our pearls are going to be lighter towards the left side. So we'll use our lighter green and paint smaller blobs inside of our darker blobs, slightly towards the top left side. You can check the reference image to place each highlight if you want to be more accurate about it, but at this point, to me, the reference image has served its purpose and I'm just going to take it from here based on my intuition. 
As you can see, the parts where we've added the simple touch are already looking more defined and just brighter and more cheerful overall. Now here, you can't really see where our circles are, which is okay. It's just a big cluster of pearls anyway, so just go ahead and place them roughly towards the left side of some imaginary circles and it'll eventually come together. So just keep going. Since we're working with the string of pearls plant, we have a lot more individual leaves to paint, but the technique is so simple with these blobs that you can't really go wrong with it. And it even begins to get meditative as you do these repetitive bits over and over again. A few of these pearls here were supposed to come over the rope, so I'll just use the highlight to bring them forward like this. Very simple. Gouache is very forgiving this way, unlike watercolors for instance, because you can easily paint over things to adjust them as you go. Now for this little guy here also, we'll add a little highlight right here. And then we'll go in and add these little connections to some of the pearls that look detached from the vines. But you don't have to connect all of them. I like to leave some of them, like this one, just floating around because it adds a nice touch of fun and whimsy to the illustration. Again, don't forget to clean your brush after every step to keep them in tip-top shape for a long, long time. And now with our yellow, we go in and add some brighter highlights, which are even smaller blobs, again on the top left side of each pearl. These are essentially just tiny little spots on each pod, but they are so effective in bringing in both dimension and brightness to the piece. And then we'll also go in and add some highlights to some parts of the vines, like this one here that was getting lost in between all the pearls. I'm just drawing very thin lines along some of the parts of the stems that I feel need some dimension. And now it's time for our darkest shadows. So we have our dark viridian here, and we'll use this to create some intense shadows. And this is what's going to bring everything to life. Most of the shadows, as we know, will be on the right side. Right? So we'll just find the bottom rights of our pearls and add some shadows underneath them, just like that. And we can put some of the smaller pods like this entirely in the shadow area, especially when they are next to a big one. I'm going to paint this entire area darker so it brings out that hanging vine even more. And unlike the previous steps, we're not going to add these harsh shadows to every single pearl. We'll use it just sparingly for it to have the maximum dramatic effect. Now as we do this, you'll start seeing these random shapes actually form into more visible circles, which is exactly what we're trying to do. I'll also add some shadows over here and on some of these pearls that are touching each other to just define them better. And finally, just like we highlighted some parts of the stems, we'll also add some shadows to the stems. Just here and there to add some definition. And ta-da! Our hanging pot of string of pearls is done. I hope you had as much fun following along with me as I had teaching you. If you decide to share your illustrations on Instagram, don't forget to tag both Peggy and me because we'd be thrilled to see your very own version of the illustration. If you'd like to learn more from me, I have a bunch of classes up on Skillshare that you're welcome to check out and join in. So until I see you again with more fun stuff, bye bye and happy creating!